Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844 236 6010. That's 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories, videos, as well as the longevity products. You can also purchase longevity products by calling 866 Seven three five twenty four seventy. That's eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one time twenty five dollar fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business. You can get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. All for a one time twenty five dollar fee. Call eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy for more information. That's eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. Also, would like to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com or Retinol 5% Gel, made with 5% Retinol, as well as a whole bunch of vitamin C, no preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. If you're dealing with age spots or acne blemishes or accelerated aging of the skin, nothing beats the combination of Retinol with vitamin C. The two together, Retinol and vitamin C fat-soluble vitamin C. Don't fall for the cheapo stuff. Don't fall for the ascorbic acid vitamin C products. Not only is ascorbic acid unstable, it breaks down in water, but even worse, it doesn't really penetrate back. It doesn't really penetrate through the surface of the skin. So you're not going to get those anti-aging benefits that vitamin C is so well known for. Although you may get a little smoothen smoothing, smoothening, if that's the right word, of the skin with ascorbic acid. You're not going to really get much collagen production and that's really where vitamin C shines. But the combination of vitamin C and retinol is really where it's at when it comes to anti-aging, when it comes to healing the skin, when it comes to reversing the aging process. And that's why all our truth treatment products are packed with vitamin C, fat-soluble vitamin C, as well as 5% retinol and our truth retinol 5% gel. Find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about chronic fatigue, the adrenal glands, the two little triangular pieces of tissue that sit on top 
of uh, sit on top of the kidneys that regulate salt, regulate electrolytes, produce all kinds of hormones. It's really quite amazing what these adrenal glands do. Think about it. These two little pieces of tissue, they weigh me a couple of maybe four grams, as, as much or less than a couple of pennies, but yet they produce cortisol and ad adrenaline and estrogen and testosterone and pregnenolone and DHEA. They're just hormone powerhouses. These two little structures and they're arguably, arguably aside from the heart and brain, the most important structures in the body. And they're tiny little things. They're responsible for the stress response. When, they're, when we're under chronic stress, they burn out and, and get fatigued. This can lead to problems with the thyroid and chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism. These are all intimately connected. And in a lot of ways, a poorly functioning thyroid and burnout at the adrenal gland level is indistinguishable. If you're always tired, if you're suffering from depression, brain fog that won't go away, if you're dealing with chronic diseases, if you're always getting sick, if you've got a poor libido, low sex drive, if you've got dry skin, cold, clammy hands and feet, and your fingers and toes, all of these can be related to long-term stressors associated with what I call the adrenal thyroid axis, the connection between the adrenal glands and the thyroid. Under conditions of stress, under conditions of emergency, I should say, the adrenal glands will secrete hormones. First, they'll secrete adrenaline. And adrenaline gives you super strength. There's all these uh, myths about grandmothers lifting a car off of a, a, a child, being able to lift a heavy object to uh, get a child from, uh, out from underneath it. That's the, that super strength is the res bodily response to adrenaline. And adrenaline gives you a quick action. Then the adrenal glands will secrete cortisol, more long-term kinds of stress responses. The system works great when you have a quick emergencies. And for thousands of years, for hundreds of thousands of years, the only emergencies the human body had to endure were uh, running from wild animals and, and starvation. Over the last five or six, maybe 10,000 years, emergencies became more long-lasting. They were less about physical survival and more about anticipation more about a worry, more about our imagination. This condition has become increasingly more dramatic over the last one or perhaps 2,000 years, which is a mere blip in, uh, in terms of uh, historical and evolutionary time, to the point today where many of us are living under chronic, long-term stress conditions, never-ending stress conditions. And when this happens, when our stress management system, our adrenal glands are chronically activated, and then they're burdened by malnourishment, which is also an epidemic, malnourishment, whether it's from malabsorption or whether it's from eating processed foods, and then dysglycemia, messed up gut bacteria. Two very important health suppressant effects occur. First of all, the adrenal glands will become fatigued. They're not gonna function as they should. They're gonna become less sensitive to signals coming from the brain. They're gonna run out of resources. They're important for the stress response, and this can lead to the whole syndrome, which is called chronic fatigue syndrome, or adrenal fatigue syndrome, I should say tiredness, feeling irritable, depressed, chronic fatigue can occur. They call that chronic fatigue syndrome. According to the National Academy, Academy of Medicine, there's two and a half million Americans who suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome. They used to tell you it was psychosomatic, that it was all in your head. And then um, a couple years ago, there, were, um, there was a, a, a huge study that was done. 9,000 articles were researched. It was a meta study, a study of other studies, a meta study of 9,000 articles that quote, show, uh, that showed, quote, unspecified biological causes were responsible for this phenomenon known as chronic fatigue syndrome, and no longer did they think it was all in your head. They said, well, there's a biological reason, but we just can't figure out what it is. Well, guess what? It's in the adrenal glands and the adrenal thyroid axis. The second thing that happens under conditions of chronic stress is the thyroid will start to become suppressed. And that's because of this opposing relationship between cortisol and thyroid hormone. So the body is always looking for balance. One of the responses to excessive adrenal activity, excessive secretion of cortisol, is a compensation, a compensatory slowdown in thyroid functioning. So the adrenal glands are causing the body to get real hyped up and causing blood pressure to go up and causing us to be real jittery and insomnia and have anxiety, heart palpitations perhaps. And then in compensation, the thyroid will kind of slow down to balance things out. And then you start to get into hypothyroidism, which is not really a disease, it's not really an illness, as much as it is a compensatory reaction. 
Yeah, there's other reasons for hypothyroidism, but in large part, it's a compensation to adrenal, uh, adrenal excessive activity and so-called adrenal burnout. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you if you have questions about the adrenal glands, thyroid functioning, hypothyroidism, if you're on Synthroid or levothyroxine, the generic form of Synthroid, and millions of prescriptions a year are, are uh, dispensed for, for thyroid hormone, synthetic thyroid hormone, or armor thyroid for that matter. If you have questions about uh, the thyroid or adrenal glands, chronic fatigue syndrome, anything we're speaking about here today, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. We've got a search engine up for you to review programs if you miss a program or want to direct one of your friends, loved ones, customers, clients to specific subjects. BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com have search engines. We also have the longevity products up at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. You can also sign up to join the BrightSideBen team off the website, BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. Okay, so adrenals and the thyroid, the adrenal thyroid axis. Millions of Americans are dealing with both adrenal fatigue issues. So it's estimated that some 80% of Americans have some degree of adrenal fatigue issues. This can ultimately cause problems with the thyroid gland. A typical response if you're, uh, if you're dealing with fatigue or irritability or any of these feelings that are associated with adrenal burnout, a typical response is to go to Starbucks, get yourself some caffeine, get some coffee. Problem is caffeine can make things worse. Caffeine is like a form of cortisol. It's an artificial form of cortisol, artificial form of stress hormone. And the buzz that you get from caffeine is very similar to the buzz that you get from cortisol. That's why you don't want to drink uh, coffee or caffeine containing drinks too late in the day because you're going to have a problem sleeping. If, you have a, a, if you're tired but you can't fall asleep, rest assured you're dealing with a cortisol issue or perhaps a fake cortisol issue like a caffeine issue. So drinking caffeine, which is a typical response to fatigue, can make the problems worse if you're dealing with an adrenal issue. It puts an added burden on the adrenal glands. It kind of forces the adrenal glands to, to work even harder. And so our main strategies for dealing with adrenal fatigue can lead to an exacerbation of the problem, more adrenal burnout, a vicious downward spiral where stresses and nutritional deficiencies and, and, and uh, low blood sugar lead to Adrenal fatigue issues lead to ca caffeine ingestion, lead to more adrenal fatigue issues, and down the rabbit hole we go. And then the second problem is under conditions of chronic stress, under conditions of long-term uh, adrenal activity, under conditions of adrenal burnout, the thyroid is going to be suppressed because of this opposing relationship between elevated cortisol and thyroid hormone activity because the body's always looking for balance. One of the responses to the uh, excessive adrenal activity is going to be a compensation, a compensatory slowdown in thyroid functioning. And so in this way, adrenal dysfunction can ultimately be one of the causes of hypothyroidism. And it's really, it's difficult to distinguish the symptoms of adrenal fatigue from, hypothyroid, from hypothyroidism, from a, sim a symptomatic perspective anyway. These two pathologies are very much the same thing. And this is why the third point on our triangle of disease is the adrenal thyroid axis. The two go together. And it's why treating the adrenal glands by calming the body down, by using, by using our brain, by using visualization and, and cognitive techniques, by using muscle relaxation techniques, by using your deep breathing techniques, yoga, meditation, and of course, adrenal nutrition, zinc, all super important for the adrenal glands. Zinc deficiency is very common. Vitamin C, super important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin C deficiency is common. Vitamin B5, the whole B complex is important, but especially pantothenic acid, my favorite of the B vitamins because it's got so many roles to play in skin health. You don't hear a lot about pantothenic acid, vitamin B5. That's because most foods have a little bit of B5 in it, and full-blown vitamin B5 deficiency doesn't really occur. Pantothenic acid means everywhere. 
pan comes from the from the Greek or the Latin, I think. I don't remember if it's Greek or Latin, it means everywhere. And pantothenic acid, vitamin B5 is found in a lot of food. So you don't hear a lot about deficiencies in B5, but you need a bunch of it if you're dealing with adrenal issues. I first discovered the power of vitamin B5 for dealing with oily skin and acne. And as it turns out, as we'll talk about here in a minute, oily skin is one of the signs that your adrenal glands are working over time. Oily skin is one of the signs of cortisol. So if you're one of those folks who's dealing with oily skin all the time, you've probably got an adrenal issue, and vitamin B5 can be very helpful. You do have to take a lot of it, I will say, uh, maybe two, three grams of vitamin B5. I've recommended as much as five or six grams a day of vitamin B5. If you are going to dose with vitamin B5 for your adrenal glands and for adrenal hormones, by the way, if you're dealing with... Uh, uh, with uh, uh, a low estrogen or low testosterone or low DHEA. That's another reason to dose with vitamin B5. If you're dealing with oily skin or adrenal fatigue issues, high doses of vitamin B5 can be helpful. But always, always, always remember, if you are going to take high doses of one B vitamin, you have to make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine because you don't want to just take one B vitamin. You always want the entire complex. If you're going to take high doses of B5 or high doses of niacin, for example, always make sure you take it with the entire B complex. Complex. Iodine is another very important nutrient for the adrenal glands. Magnesium is important for the adrenal glands. Anything you can do to stabilize your sugar is going to be important for the adrenal glands. So if you're dealing with hypothyroidism, these are all strategies that you want to employ. Focus on the adrenal glands if you're dealing with hypothyroidism. Adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism are in many ways similar. There are, there are some distinct, uh, distinctions, however, between the two. For one thing, uh, both hypothyroid patients and adrenal fatigue patients are going to suffer from weight gain issues, but over time, adrenal burnout will cause patients to lose weight, and as the problem persists, as the adrenal gland issues persist, it's not unusual for folks who are dealing with chronic ad adrenal problems to uh, have a hard time gaining weight. They will present as being super skinny, they'll be really kind of fast moving, and they'll have a hard time gaining weight. In Indian or Ayurvedic medicine, they say their vata, if you know anything about Ayurvedic people, uh, Ayurvedic medicine, I should say, uh, vata patients are, tend to be really fast-moving patients. They'll have, a problem, have problems gaining weight, and uh, they'll also have uh, adrenal fatigue issues. Another difference between adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism is that when you have adrenal problems, this is going to cause your body temperature to fluctuate from high to low and from low to high. And then if you're uh, hypothyroid, you're pretty much just going to have a low body temperature. Adrenal fatigue will make it difficult to fall asleep. Hypothyroid patients, hypothyroid patients not so much. In fact, hypothyroid patients may sleep too much, too much. Adrenal stress may cause heart palpitations. This doesn't tend to occur with hypothyroidism. Adrenal patients will crave sweet and salty foods. Hypothyroid patients will tend more towards fatty foods. Depression is more of uh, the result of hypothyroidism. It can sometimes occur if you're dealing with adrenal burnout, but if you have full-blown depression, that's usually an issue, uh, more of a thyroid issue than a, an adrenal issue. Hair loss is more common with thyroid issues than with adrenal issues. Uh, adrenal patients will have more oily skin. Thyroid, hypothyroid patients will tend to have drier skin. Uh, hypothyroid patients may have ashy skin. Ashy skin is when dead skin cells accumulate on the surface due to a suppression in skin enzyme activity that follows hypothyroidism. This is where alpha hydroxy acids, particularly lactic acid and glycolic acid applied topically can be really helpful if you're dealing with ashy skin or dead skin cells that don't seem to come off. Get yourself on a good alpha hydroxy acid toner or even something like apple cider vinegar or red wine can help uh, improve uh, ashy skin condition. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. A couple interesting stories I want to read about. Did you guys hear about this new... Um, the new blood pressure standard, uh, 130, is the new 140. It used to be 140 where you had high blood pressure and you would get drugged, dosed. And by the way, high blood pressure medication is among the most deadly and toxic of all meds, the beta blockers and calcium channel blockers in particular. They work by blocking neural activity to the circulatory system. Dumb, dumb, dumb medical strategy in a whole long laundry list of stupid medical strategies. It's near the top to poison the heart 
and to poison the circulatory system to lower the blood pressure. Now, according to the American Heart Association and the American Cardi uh, College of Cardiology, high blood pressure is now going to be defined as 130 over 180 instead of 140 over 90. That now means that nearly 50% of Americans are gonna be hypertensive. A boondoggle for drug companies, of course, who can now sell poison medication to more and more people. It used to be 32% of adults. One out of three had hypertension. Now 46% of adults are going to be hypertensive. God, what is going on, people? Please do not let them poison your body if you have a blood pressure of 140 over 90. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Hypertension is a classic sign of the, uh, an activated stress response. Calm the body down. Even according to WebMD, I was just, where's this article from WebMD? Even according to WebMD uh, from a couple of years ago, and I can't seem to find this right now, uh, expert panel, this is uh, an article that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2013, uh, pu and, and posted on WebMD, recommendations based on clinical evidence show that stricter guidelines provide no additional benefits to patients. That's uh, according to Dr. Paul James, head of the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. Quote, we really couldn't see additional benefits by driving blood pressure lower than 150 in people over 60 years of age. It was very clear that 150 was the best number and they want to dose you with poison. And I am not using that word poetically. I mean literally poison if your blood pressure is 130 now. Don't let them do it to you people. Do not let your cardiologist or doctor poison you because you have a blood pressure of 130 over 90, even though standards of care mandate that they have to. We got this crazy, crazy, crazy way of treating the body. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's hit the phones and welcome Michael. I think it's Michael. Is it Michael from Texas? How you doing, Mike? Or is it Michelle? Hey. I can't tell you. Michael? Uh Michael, good morning, Ben. Good, good morning, Michael. How you doing, buddy? Um, I'm well, thank you. Uh, not as well as I'd like to be, otherwise I probably wouldn't be calling. But I get that. Uh, I get that. I uh, wanted to thank you for your work and your generous spirit and the patience you exhibit. With, uh, hey, Michael, but Michael, we're, you're, you're cutting out, bro. Can you uh, maybe get walk to a different area? Or, I don't know if it's your phone. I'm only hearing a little bit of what you're saying. My apologies. Can you hear me any better? No, no, no. This is terrible. Tell you what, call right back. I'm going to let you go. Call right back, and I'll put you right up. I'm going to take another call and get you right up, okay? Apologize. Just having a hard time I'll hearing call, I'll call right back. Call right back. Okay, thank you. Uh, meantime, let's go to, 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 let's go to Shauna in Idaho. Good morning, Shauna. Good morning, Ben. Hey. I have um, a question. My yes. mother had pneumonia. They put her on antibiotics, and they said yes. to take probiotics at the same time because it takes up space while they're good, and I'm going, uh, I don't understand that. So they want you to take probiotics and antibiotics at the same time? Yeah. they said. Well, that doesn't make any the, sense. Yeah. They say it takes up the space while the good is trying to get grown back, but I'm like, but you're taking they, antibiotics and killing everything. No, that doesn't make sense at all. You want to, you want to take them together in the, in the sense that, you know, when you're on a, on a round of antibiotics, you want to make sure you're doing probiotics, but not at the same time. Maybe wait. That's what I thought. So yeah. like two hours after? Or how, There's no real way to know, to tell you the truth. But, yeah, three hours, two, three, four hours kind of thing. Okay, take them on, take my, them on an empty stomach. Should, Okay, she said, no, the pharmacist said to take it together. And no. my other real quick question is my brother has been getting blood clots, and he's been in the hospital, and he had a stroke, but now his feet are all, the toes on one foot are all black and blue, and they said they might amputate. That's terrible. I is he diabetic? I know he's going to change his diet. I, I, I don't know. I need to check into all that. But I'm wondering if there's anything he can yes. soak his feet in. Well, no. There's things he could do to improve circulation. He's not circulating. The, the blood is not moving right. around, around his body. It's not getting to his extremities. You've got to improve the circulation. Get him on a rebounder. Have him exercising. Laying off the sugar. I mean, it's not an option at this point. If he, they're talking amputating the feet or the toes, or you know, that, that's, he doesn't have an option. He's got to go immediately on a ketogenic diet, in my opinion. Have him use the Sweeties, fiber with meals, drinking lots of water, and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. 
Uh, you might want to make sure that he's using um, uh, things like vitamin E, which can help improve blood flow, omega-3 fatty acids. He'll get that in, the, uh, in his ultimate EFA and ultimate EFA+. Plus. Also, the Fucoid Z can help as well. Treat him like a diabetic. He needs to lose weight. I'm sure he's overweight if he's got this kind of problem. He isn't. He isn't. He's always but, been riding his bike. He got prostate cancer, but then I'm sure it's something in his diet. It's got to be. And he's in the hospital, not letting him even get up. And I'm like, well, dude, at this, you got to do something the, for these feet. Yeah, he's got to move his body around. Oxygen is also a great blood thinner. The blood will clot under conditions of uh, hypoxia, low it, blood it, oxygen. And the blood will also clot okay. under conditions of leaky gut when to food toxins get into the system. At this point, he's probably hypothyroid. He's probably got a lot of problems going on. But yeah, you got to start where you cancer. can start. What's they that? Lung cancer, stage four. Uh, yeah, he's what? got a lot of. Oh, oh, you didn't tell me that. Oh, yeah, he's he's deteriorating very quickly. I know you got him. You got, he doesn't have time to fool around here. Ketogenic diet immediately, and I, he probably wants somebody to keep track of everything he's doing. How old is he? Um, sixty. Okay, well, he's been mucking up the works now for six decades, and it sounds like pretty significantly. You know, sixty is young, you guys. Sean, at 60 is young. You got another 40 years, 50 years potentially at, at the age of 60. There's, to be deteriorating that significantly at the age of 60 means that's a, that's a lot of mucking up the works. Was he a smoker? Um, no, he isn't. No. He, well, he's CPA, something's going on. But yeah, Something, something's going on dramatically in there. Go ketogenic diet, calorie restriction, uh, chicken soup, bone soup. Uh, but, you know, at this point, he's got to do some serious, he's got to take some serious um, uh, uh, measures. And I would say he'd need somebody who can guide him through the process. I'd have him either find a naturopath or if he wants to call me, I'm happy to help him. But he, he needs a lot more than, than just a, a, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine at this point. There's a lot, a lot of stuff he needs and it's much more than we can talk about on this program. But if he wants to give me a call or send an email, ben at ksco.com, I'm happy to help him out. Okay? Thank you. Thank That's you. So God bless you, Sean, and good luck. All right, let's go back to Michael in Texas. Let's see if we get a better connection. Michael. Hey, can you hear me? No, man. You're just cutting out real bad. Let's try it. What, what do you got going on? Michael? Michael, Michael? Can you hear me, Ben? No. Nah, uh, let's try, Michael. What, how can I help you before we lose you? You may just bail out here on us. Can you hear me okay, Ben? Yes, yes. What's going on, Michael? All right, my apologies. Michael, I hate to do this to you, man. You have just a terrible connection, and I cannot make out what you're saying, bro. Uh, you're welcome to try back. I just can't understand what you're saying, sir, and I really apologize. It sounds like you want to talk to us. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, try one more time, Michael. I'm going to let you go. Try one more time. I apologize. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will return with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Michael again, a different Michael here uh, from Washington, Michael. Good morning, Michael. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, Ben. Uh, real quickly, uh, I'm, on, I'm on the Essential 90s for years, uh, gluten-free, et cetera. Nice. I've got a healthy lifestyle, but recently I got extreme pain in my... Uh, glands underneath my chin Ooh. and going up my Salivary jaw glands. into my head. So I went to the doctor and he referred me to a throat doctor and they diagnosed me with salivary gland disease. Ooh. And he checked it out and he says the stone is huge and he says he's recommending that, that I have surgery. Now hang on, hang on a quick second, Michael. Just a quick second. He said salivary gland disease and it's a salivary stone? It's got a stone, yeah. It's okay, now, now why does he has the stone? Why did he say it was diseased? The stone is is more about the saliva than it is about the gland. Did well, he notice uh, it? The, it's a it's, it's a technical SI. It's diagnosed as a, I forget the name of it. Okay, but, but he, it's, 
he says that uh, it can get infected, and uh, he's recommending that he can't get to it, you know, by hand in the office, you know, or whatever. He's recommending, though, taking the whole gland out. The whole salivary so my, gland my out? My question is, would you have this, mm -mm. Would you have this surgery Hell done? Hell no. Hell no, I would not unless they have a, like some kind of disease going on in there, cancer or something. Um, did he did he did he say when you say SI? Are you saying was it a salivary calculi? Is that the term he used? Um, I'm sorry, it, it's a uh, you know uh, it begins SI. It's a real long SI. I'm not sure what, what, what the SI is. Now, salivary gland stones are just stones. They're not a gland issue. They're caused by sticky, gooky stuff in the liquids, liquid part of your body. In this case, the saliva. Yeah, the stone you, is in my, in my gland underneath, in the back of my mouth. Now, and gland. he's saying he can't, he can't get to it? He can't get to uh, it? With, he's telling you he can't Go get ahead. to it? He can't get, he can't get to the stone is what he's saying? He can get to it, but the stone is too big to remove. Mm. That could be excruciating. In the office, so he wants to have surgery on me, and I want to know: Is there anything naturally I can do to reverse this and avoid the surgery? Are you in? Are you in a lot of pain? Well, that's interesting because from day one, even before I saw my doctor and saw the throat doctor, I began my regimen of trying to, uh, was overdoses of silver saw. And mm -hmm. so uh, it now, as, as of doing it every day, yeah. uh, the pain has subsided, Okay, but I still have problems swallowing. With, oh my you know, gosh, Mike. A, yeah. Try, try a couple things here. First of all, if you suck on something tart, like a lemon. I did that. Did it help? Well, I don't know. I, the the pain is, is, is has lessened, but keep doing it. Keep uh, sucking on keep sucking on lemons. Drink lots okay. and lots of water. When you suck on lemons, you got to make sure you keep your teeth clean though, because the acid can kind of mess up the enamel. Uh, but yeah, sucking on something tart may help, and then drinking lots of few, water can help as well. I'd be concerned why you're forming stones. I, you know, I don't know the situation, so I can't tell you whether you should have the surgery or not. But I would sure be trying alternatives. And if you're noticing that things like sucking on lemons is helping you, uh, is reducing the pain, that might be all you need. And I would continue doing that. You want to be very, 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 very respectful of the surgical procedure, and don't do it unless it's absolutely absolutely necessary if you're in miserable pain or there's a problem with your tongue or something like that then you're going to or if there's swelling then you're going to need you may need some surgical some surgery but uh in the meantime i would be uh, doing all the other strategies drinking lots of water and then also uh also um I'm sucking on the lemons are you on any medication by any chance no i'm on okay. no medications and uh and you're healthy. The only medication is the antibiotic silver saw. But is there any nutrition I can take? Any vitamins or minerals that I can the take? Vitamin to, uh... A. My, yeah. Here's a couple ideas. Niacin. You, uh, you want to open up the open up the uh, the blood vessels basically and the fluids the fluid vessels in your body the glandular vessels. Uh, vitamin E perhaps might help. Omega three fatty acids might help. Magnesium, and then also uh, uh, vitamin K. If it's a calcium stone, vitamin K can help, and then your ultimate niacin, and, and then also the fucoid Z. These are all in the interest of keeping things move, the fluid parts of your body moving along, and keeping the calcium out of the tissue, out of the, uh, out of the, uh, keeping excess calcium out of the saliva. You may also, if you're running acidic, that may cause a problem with too much calcium in the saliva, uh, and if you, that is the case, you, you you would have some symptoms, but you may also want to try things like uh, slow, deep breathing techniques, things that uh, eliminating sugar, eliminating any talk. Uh, digestive toxins, all of these can increase the acid level of your blood, make your blood more acidic, and then calcium will leach out into the fluids in order to neutralize the, uh, the low pH. If that's the case, then relaxing the body and eliminating toxicity can be, can be beneficial as well. You may also want to try apple cider vinegar. Uh, that might be beneficial for you too. Uh, but if it is, how long if it, should I do this naturally? How long should I go? You want to. That's a great question. What you want to do is you want to see that the problem is getting better. If you not, if you notice that you're plateauing, it's not getting better, or if it's getting worse, then you may have to go into something more mechanical, like a surgical procedure. Although I would wait to, I would do everything I could do uh, in terms of nutrition and more water and sucking on lemons and such uh, before I did that. He says. He says the doctor says that it. You know, I said, well, can I get rid of this naturally? And he said he didn't think so. And he says 
uh, that it's going to ultimately get infected. Yeah, that could and happen. That's why I say you want to trend in the right direction. If you're not trending in the right direction, then you want to have a, a medical procedure done. You want to do wait till the very end, though. Uh, if you notice you're plateauing or not getting better, uh, that's when you want to have a medical procedure. But if you are getting better, and it sounds like you are, you may want to continue. Okay. You, and okay. by the way, the apple cider vinegar you can also apply topically too, in addition to helping alkalinize. Is uh, there anything else I can apply topically? Castor oil. Castor oil. Castor oil might help. That's an Edgar, old Edgar Casey solution. Also, an uh, interesting natural remedy for calcium is borax. You can get borax at a drugstore, B-O-R-A-X. Put a little bit of borax in, uh, into some water and kind of sip on it throughout the day. That might help you as well. Can I and rub then, it on there? Uh, I don't know if it would help it if you there? rub it. You might try it. And then, um, and, but, but the uh, magnesium and the, uh, and the vitamin K, that's, that's very helpful for calcium, any kind of calcium stones. Epsom salt, too. No, you can use, it, Epsom, you can use Epsom salts oh, topically. Yeah. Go ahead. The stone bunt, Ben, is it going to, all this uh, natural stuff, is it going to dissolve the stone or is it going to free the stone up? No. Well, both. It'll dissolve it and free it. Both. Okay. Okay? So there's a whole bunch of strategies there for you. But if it does get worse, then you you probably want to have a a medical procedure done. All right. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you you out, Michael. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's, good, good, good to talk to you. All right. Let's go to, uh, Ron in Minneapolis. Good morning, Ron. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, Ron. Going once. Going twice. Uh, Ron? Ron? Okay, I'm going to let you go, Ron. I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, let's go on to uh, John in Kansas. Good morning, John. Good morning. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm uh, recovering from the foot surgery, and you suggested uh, doing a detox cleanse. And I was wondering about uh, when I take this for Aviv or do any detox with bentonite, zeolite, or charcoal, how can I take my supplements, in particular uh, time-release supplements? Take them away. Take them away from the, the charcoal and the zeolite. All those things will help will pull the, pull the supplements out as well as other things. Uh, time-release is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, depending on how long the time release is, because if you do take the, the uh, say you're using charcoal and you are on a time release niacin, for example, as that niacin is being released, the charcoal is going to pull out the niacin. So you do have to be a little bit more respectful with the uh, timed release. So maybe give it, depending on how long the time release is set up for, give it six hours or so between, uh, between your time release dose and your charcoal dose. But that's a very good point. Bentonite clay, zeolite, charcoal, they're detox substances, but they will pull nutrition out nutritional supplements out uh, out of your system as well as they'll pull toxins out of your system so you want to do them separately that's a very good question i hope does that help you you have anything else the, B, the btt 2.0 in the on the go pack is time release uh, be, say that one more time the btt is time release yeah the 2.0 tablets in the on the go oh, pack. oh the tablets yeah 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 you're gonna have to keep those separate from the charcoal and the zeolite if maybe do the maybe do the btt in the morning and then do the char- and then uh, do your char- uh, charcoal or zeolite or algae or whatever you're doing to to cleanse the blood to detox the system uh, m- many hours after you do the btt six seven hours after you do the btt okay uh, all right thanks john me. anything else uh, you mentioned vitamin E, and I was confused because there's D-alpha, D-L-alpha, and mixed tocopherols. And I just go, with the mixed, go with the mixed tocopherols. And if you can find mixed tocotrienols, that's even better. Mixed, to- mixed tocopherols and mixed tocotrienols. Got to go, buddy. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.